Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a series of interviews by Think Tank Alter Contacts, where the real entrepreneurs share their insights. My name is Yulia Skopchenko, and today my guest is Tessa van Kaken, the founder of Lift Your Spirit and Tavika International Communication and Language Consultancy. Hello, Tessa. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. And thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to uh, tell me where are you at the moment? Where are you based? So I am based in Amstelveen, just outside Amsterdam. And um, I always kind of feel like having to say I am Dutch, but I've lived 15 years in Ireland. So I still feel a little bit like an expert in my own country, but I'm fully back here in the Netherlands now. Well, that must be a very interesting feeling. Uh, and I hope it brings you um, a, a lot of joy to observe uh, your own country in a new way. So, but let's, uh, let's get down to business, as they say, right? Uh, what is uh, Lift Your Spirit? Uh, what do you do there? Yes, so Lift Your Spirit. I um, originally set up Lift Your Spirit in Ireland when I was still there about 10 years ago as a holistic therapist. So at the time I did all kinds of different treatments, <clears throat> including at the time massages and also Reiki healing and meditation. And then throughout the years, I focused more and more on uh, specifically on healing and coaching, um, both life coaching and also career coaching. And I created the two um, combining uh, that with an element of um, Reiki and meditation healing. So then when I moved to the Netherlands, um, because my business was fully face-to-face -face in Ireland, um, so moving to the Netherlands, I had a few clients actually from Ireland that at the time uh, joined me online. And also I um, went first year that I was back in the Netherlands, I actually spent most of my time traveling back and forth to Ireland to see, uh, to give workshops and trainings there and to do uh, to my clients there. But being back in the Netherlands, I had to kind of reestablish my business here. So, uh, yeah, so I've been doing that for the last about one and a half years. Well, really a year, because the first year, as I said, I was traveling to Ireland actually most of the time. Uh, so now it really is a business around um, transformational coaching and mentoring for people to really go deeper within themselves. And uh, I use coaching and healing with that mainly in the combination. So for some people, it goes more into their own personal conscious living practices. And for other people, it's more like the coaching side, um, but with some elements of healing and meditation within that. You have quite some history in, the, in, the, in this practice, in this area. I mean, with, uh, with the whole community and the market built uh, in Ireland for it, and now uh, building up again in the Netherlands. Um, if I was to explore your service, just to give a little bit more understanding to our uh, listeners and viewers, um, if I was to become your client, what would I be hoping to get out of it? Um, well, interestingly, it really, it really differs what angle people come with. Uh, a lot of people come from that feeling of feeling lost or stuck or feeling there, there must be more to life basically, and this overwhelm or being very critical of themselves. So there can be different things that are happening for someone. And some people really notice that in their relationships. Other people notice that more in their uh, business or in their work. Other people notice it more in just their daily life that something doesn't feel right. So the reason why people come can actually be different, but it always is something around like this idea of, um, needing to find themselves or needing to get unstuck and knowing and they often have done a lot of like you know when you've done a lot of self-help or you've looked at affirmations and you've looked at all these different things that help you with your mindset and looking at your values and beliefs but then very often you notice that something inside is still feeling like that there is something still lacking or missing so I work with people who want to go just, just like one step deeper to really see that they can go from um, doing what they see is the right thing, being more positive, to actually experiencing that from the inside out. 
Um, and, and, and one so of my clients actually, sorry, yeah, you, one of my clients actually very kindly said the other day, she really nicely, I like, loved that. She said, yeah, I started with the idea I had to find myself, but I realized it's really about having to accept myself. And I thought that kind of captured what I do. Um, basically, as I understand, uh, we can get deeper into knowing ourselves through uh, meditation, healing, and other different practices that you apply. And how did the lockdown affect uh, the general mood of your clients, your business? So what changed? Um, well, what really changed uh, most of all was that um, for my clients, I could really see uh, an upsurge in like this feeling of overwhelm. Um, like, you know, we humans, we like to know what happens, right? We like to uh, see where we're heading. And I think this this whole corona stuff there was so much of unknown and you could hear people talking about like oh well maybe this might happen or maybe that might happen or let's try to figure out what the outcome might be and then realizing that that's not possible and i think so i know there's a lot of people being very uh, having difficulty dealing with that uncertainty and um what i do in my work is obviously we can't find that certainty so i help people to get into a state where they can feel more okay with not knowing um one of the things that really happened is like one of the things i also did is i uh, did also give meditation classes and uh, healing courses also uh, with people with dementia actually in a local community and that's very sadly of course all stopped and isn't back up and running yet uh, and one of the things I also really for my business noticed, like people uh, would come also for sessions or treatments uh, to my practice. And obviously I had to stop that. And although restrictions are lifting a little bit again, it's still most people definitely don't feel comfortable yet uh, coming together in bigger groups and things like that. So uh, one of the main things I really noticed that in the beginning it all stopped and then slowly more most people were willing to kind of try also to do this online and um i i knew this from before from practicing that although it's very nice to meet face to face with a group and there's an element that you can't replace by meeting online but at the same time a lot of that uh, feeling of um joining together in a group and feeling that energy of the group can happen online as well and interestingly due to what happened, people were willing to try that out. And it was really nice to see how many really, how many people really came back with that as well, that they were really saying how much they noticed, uh, how much they got out of that, uh, that they hadn't and expected. Transferring uh, your practice from in-person to online could be challenging. Like you said, a lot of people uh, were reluctant to, to even try. And it's a very impressive that you say that you were able to achieve the group dynamic also uh, yeah. in the virtual world. So did you keep your connection with the customers even while they were not uh, signing up for the sessions, maybe for the paid sessions? Yeah, I think so. And not everyone, of course, was willing. As I said, it really started with a dip because people were first like, everything is off the table. We can't meet anymore. So everything really stopped. And then slowly people started to uh, come back. Some, not all. Um, also, I really used this time um, I offered a lot of free sessions because I also both for um, like obviously as a business um, it is also a way to show people what's possible online but it also really come came from a space that I really felt uh, there was this collective need of community and support so you know again uh, for most people in the kind of businesses that I am in like of course there's always that desire to also really support people so for me, it was a no-brainer to just start with just also a lot of free sessions um, just to, uh, you know, the more the collective energy rises again to have more calm and balance, the better for everyone. So, um, yeah, I did that a lot as well. And also, um, I spent a lot of time also during the first time when, you know, the kind of the client work stopped for a lot of collaboration projects with other people to... Um, I started a podcast with a colleague of mine in the UK, again, online. So, you know, just like this through Zoom, we just started to record uh, a podcast about mindset and business. Um, I uh, 
I uh, was part of Coach Aid, which was set up by a colleague coach of mine in Australia about like offering free coaching to people who were um, really struggling with transition from uh, working to working from home. Uh, and I also did actually a lot of work for myself, a lot of courses. I did several courses with some um, spiritual and transformation coaching teachers to kind of you know, deepen my own practice so that I can help people better as well once, you know, once things pick up again. So you used uh, the time to uh, to contribute to society, to, to your clients, to communities. And uh, I hear a lot of goodwill. I hear a lot of pro bono work. And of course, self-development is a recurring topic uh, that absolutely, if, if you were had interest in anything, it was the right time to learn. Yes. Um, but in terms of business, uh, it sounds like it wasn't really going that well. And how do you feel, am I right in saying that? And how do you feel it's going to pick up in the next few months? Yeah, so it started a little bit already, actually, in the last month or so. Uh, well, last month, I'd say. So slowly it started to pick up again with people wanting to do work online. And uh, from all this, like what you're saying about uh, the pro bono work I did, but also the collaborations, like one thing I really noticed that what people crave most at the moment is also that, uh, again, this finding that, that own inner peace to be able to deal with all the uh, kind of overwhelm and all the uncertainty that's happening at the moment, but also to really craving that uh, connection, that community. Um, and that's why I decided to, besides the one-on-one -on -one programs I do um, and, and the kind of small meditation workshops, I decided to set up a kind of a community membership. So that is something that is actually opening next week and it uh, will be opening to sign up for uh, about a month and then in the coming months we will be working together. So uh, we will do uh, there will be several meditations during the week and there will be also sessions where we really look deeper at how this kind of mindfulness practice, how to actually implement that in your daily life. Because in the end, it's great to, you know, spend five or 20 minutes in pure calm. But if you're as stressed when you go out into the world, it doesn't really work. So it's really around that more conscious living. And then why I'm doing it as a membership, as a community, is that I noticed that people, people feel that need to come together. And since that's still partly possible again outside, but still quite difficult, I think it's a really nice way to uh, create that community online where people can come together and support each other as well. So I hear that at some, at some point I will be able to join, uh, well, me and the viewers, the listeners, uh, we will be able to join uh, a community with a membership fee uh, that would allow access to your meditation classes or practices and maybe some other things and mainly uh, to, for, for, for us to see who else is part of that, uh, of that community, right? Yes, actually, you can sign up already. The link will hopefully be here underneath as well. And uh, doors will be open until the 1st of July to sign up. But it will be either you can choose to uh, do it pay monthly or sign up for six months straight away. And there will obviously be some extra bonuses if you do that. But you can find that all out if you uh, click on the link. But it really is around and it's a, it's a private community. So I do think um, it's good to create that atmosphere, that space with people. So those, those classes, those uh, sessions are for only for the people that are in that group so that you can really, beside your own growth, uh, also grow together to really create that collective space as well. Um, and I call it the through you interconnection circle. So it's like both about being true to yourself and really finding yourself or accepting yourself, but also that interconnection, that connection with others as well. It sounds uh, really nice. And I think uh, for a lot of people out there, that's absolutely a necessary thing uh, to have in their life. I think we were all missing a bit of a, a, con well, a group contact, so to say. Um, and I hope a lot of people will be signing up. It has not been easy uh, during the last few months, not for entrepreneurs, not for anyone. So hopefully uh, in the next few months, we're going to see a completely different story, a dramatic change and, you know, pick up of activities and everything. So thank you very much, Tessa, for joining me today. 
Thank you so much for having me here. And I think these, these, uh, all these initiatives that you create are just such an amazing, uplifting element as well in this uncertain times. Thank you. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you would like to sign up for a course by Tessa or a community by Tessa, you will find all the details in the description below the video. Uh, I would invite you to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel and leave your comments. Did you like it? What did you like? Uh, we want to hear from you. And in the next few weeks, we will have many more insights to share with you. So stay tuned and bye.